Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm starting part two of my series Alice of Wonderland as an Edwardian Lady, where I'm going to be making the corset. If you're not familiar with this project and you want to learn more about it, click on the I in the corner or the video link in the description. Currently we're working on the foundational layers, and I've already made the combinations in a different video. Now let me show you the design that I've created for the corset, and I'll talk to you about the decisions that I made. Here's my sketch. It's basically just a really simple 1910s corset. I'll be making it with two layers of linen, so I have this blue linen, which I'm going to use for the outside, and then this off-white which I'll use for the lining. This is a mid-bust long line corset, so it doesn't actually cover the entire chest, it starts in the middle of the bust. Then it stops just about below the hips. Something that's different about the corsets of this era than in like the Victorian era is that the busks were straight. I've had this busk for an incredibly long time, it's basically the fastener that goes in the front of the corset, and it is not bent at all, it is a perfectly straight piece of metal. And don't be freaked out by the fact that I said it's made of metal, it is incredibly flat. Flexible. So it clips closed in the front to get it on your body, and then you lace it up in the back. Here are a few inspiration pictures of some actual historical corsets from this era. A few features of this corset that were very common of the time are, for one thing, the garters. These were basically flexible straps that came off the bottom of the corset that you would clip to your stockings to keep them up. Then there will also be some lace going around the top, that's just a decorative feature that was incredibly popular, and not just for the 1910s, it was popular for a long time. And I'll also be doing some flossing, which is this kind of embroidery method that you do around the boning channels to help keep the boning in place. So fair warning, I have never made a corset before, so I don't exactly know that I should recommend that you follow my instructions because... I don't know how this is going to turn out really. I will be drafting the pattern myself, and I've drafted a lot of patterns, but never for a corset, and so I really hope that I can make it fit me nicely. And also there are a few historical things that can't exactly be achieved in the modern day. For one thing, our fabric is literally different now. Like I am using linen fabric, and they would have used linen fabric sometimes, but historically it would have been woven super duper fine, super duper tight, and that's just really hard to find nowadays, partly just because of the style. People kind of like the look of being able to see the weave on linen. And then also, corsets are boned, and the reason it is called boning is because it used to be made of whalebone, which is not a thing anymore. As far as I know, it's pretty much illegal kind of everywhere to hunt whales, so I can't use actual whalebone. So I'll be using the good old zip ties trick, because I've heard that that works great, I used that method in my grad dress, and it works beautifully. So let's see if I can draft and make a corset, shall we? Okay, so I have a kind of weird idea, but I think it'll work pretty well. Corsets are quite finicky, so this might not be what you would expect me to do, but I'm kind of going to eyeball my pattern at first, and then I'm going to kind of measure the waist, bust, and hip spots to see that they actually fit me if I add them all together, and they probably won't exactly, so then I'll just sort of fiddle with the pieces a little bit until they do fit. So I'm just going to draw the pattern pieces onto some paper, and I've looked at a lot of antique corsets, so I kind of know generally what the pieces should look like. Um, and then hopefully I can kind of get the dimensions right. The only thing I am going to measure beforehand is the length, because I want it to actually like already have like the hips and the waist in the right spot. So let's just start eyeballing it and see how it goes. Okay, I have drawn up my first pass at the pattern, and I'm going to cut these pieces out and trace them onto a fresh piece of paper so that I have a backup to alter after. And then with these pieces, I'm going to tape them together and stick it on my body and see if it kind of sort of fits, and then from there I can make some alterations to the copy. If you've seen much of my channel before, you probably know that I am not a huge mock-up kind of girl, but with this I think it is necessary even if I just do it with paper. And there is something very different about the fit of a corset versus like a dress bodice or something. This is not actually supposed to fit me, if you know what I mean, because it's supposed to be a little bit small so that you can actually like cinch it just a little bit. When you're wearing a corset, it should generally make your waist around two inches smaller-ish, and then the skin and fat from your waist kind of gets pushed upwards towards your bust and downwards towards your hips. So I basically want those to just snugly fit the measurements that I already have there. So I'll make a copy of this and then cut them out and tape them together and we'll see how it fits. Oh, 
All right, I have my paper draft taped together and this is how it fits. It does pucker a little weird in a few spots, mostly just because of the tape. And also I can't really actually pull it tight because it's paper and I'll rip it. But I think when this is made of linen, that this should work pretty decently. Now, some other things I wanna mention about the fit of a corset. You actually kind of want the waist to hit just a tiny bit below sort of where you normally would consider your waist. This is because a big part of the purpose of a corset is sort of to push all of this upward. It's a historical version of a bra, basically. Another thing is, if you're making a paper mock-up, you can't actually lace it up, as I mentioned, and so it is not going to quite seem like it fits you. Because right now, this shape seems too exaggerated, and that's kind of because it is. But when the waist is actually tightened on the final corset, everything will sort of move inward, and then the hips and the bust ought to fit me better. And a couple things that I'm going to change on the pattern is I don't actually just want this to be straight on the bottom. A lot of Edwardian corsets would have sort of these pieces sticking down that the garters would be attached to, and I'm going to do something like that. So you can't really see because it's in pencil, but I've actually numbered each of these panels so that I can keep them straight. And around panel two is probably where I'm going to make one of those little flappy bits coming off. And I'll probably do the same around panel four. There are five panels, and so the whole thing will have ten, because this is just half of the corset. When I'm cutting out the fabric pieces, I'm going to trace every single piece directly onto the fabric, and then I'll probably give it like a quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And with a lot of the things I make, I just kind of guess the seam allowance when I'm actually sewing, but I want to be sure that the line is actually there on all of the pattern pieces so that I can see exactly how much seam allowance I'm leaving when I'm hand sewing it. Because if it's a little bit too off, then I might mess with the fit of the corset. So I'm gonna add my little extensions to the copy of the pattern and then we can start cutting out the fabric pieces. Okay, I'm about to sew all of the pieces together. I have them all cut out, but I want to go over the order of things with you. If you've followed more modern sewing instructions, you're probably familiar with the method of bag lining, and this is sort of where you sew together the outer pieces, and then you sew together all of the lining pieces, and then you put them together afterwards. But the way this is gonna work is I'm going to layer the lining and the outer material before I sew them together. So I'll pretty much just be treating it like one layer of fabric. And there's a few reasons for this. One is that if I layer the linen twice, it's much less like stretchy and malleable and it'll just be sturdier for the corset. But another reason is that with some of the hand stitching later when I'll be sewing on the inside, if it's lined, I can just pick up one of the layers of fabric and you won't be able to see it on the other side. But another reason lining can be really useful is if you wanna do some embroidery before you sew the pieces together, you can embroider the top layer of fabric and then the ugly thread backs and stuff will be hidden by the lining. Now, I was just thinking about some possible embroidery, but I think I'm not going to do any. There is still gonna be some decoration later and also the flossing, the method that I mentioned mentioned earlier where you sort of do some decorative but also functional embroidery to keep the boning in place. Now something else you need to know is how I'm going to sew on pieces number one and number five. These are the folded edge pieces that are going at the front opening and the back opening. For all of the other pieces I'm gonna have the lining and the outer layered and I'm just gonna put them with the blue sides together, sew along them, and that's it. But essentially, instead of keeping it folded and then sewing it to the other pieces, I'm gonna keep it unfolded and just sew with one of the edges, with one layer. Now, you could do a lot of this sewing with a machine, just using a straight stitch, but if you know me, you know that I pretty much hand sew everything, so I am just gonna be using a back stitch. Oh, and another thing, I'm going to be using this thread, and I know it's white and the outer fabric is blue, so you might be able to see the stitches a little bit, but this is really nice, strong white cotton thread, so I'd rather know that the seams are really, really sturdy than have it match the material. So let's get stitching.
I've sewn together each half of the corset, and we still have all of the raw edges exposed. And now you can see how these end pieces do not have the lining. And next we're gonna add the waist tape, and I have just this little scrap of vintage edge binding, and I'm just gonna iron this out to be flat, because I think this will work pretty well as a waist tape. And exactly as it sounds, we're gonna put the waist tape right along the waist on the inside of the corset. So along the waist, I'm gonna pin this waist tape here at each of the seams, and that's where I'm gonna stitch it into place. And I'm having the end go a little bit over the last seam, so that later we can fold this edge piece over top of it and sew that in place and that'll make the ends nice and clean and also hold the waist tape really securely. So that's what we'll do next and then after that I'm going to start putting in the boning channels and I have some more edge binding for that. I'm also going to iron this flat. I know this is very very blue but it's going on the inside so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I found this at the thrift store a while ago. This is I believe a cotton material and if you don't have any you can make it yourself. It's basically just a really long folded and ironed piece of fabric but it's not going along the grain of the fabric. If you make it yourself, you're gonna to wanna to cut it along a diagonal because that sort of gives it this flexibility to go around curves a little bit more if you need to. So once the waist tape is in, these are going to go right over top of the seams. I'm gonna to have to trim the seam allowance a little bit because it's a little bit too big tied. Um, but this is gonna go right over top of the seam to hide it, and then the boning will go inside. So I'm actually gonna cut the seam allowance before I stick the waist tape in, that'll just be a little bit easier. So let's get to work, shall we? I have sewn two boning channels into each half of the corset. These took a very long time and lots of lots of tiny whip stitches, but finally we can move on to the next step. We can now work on these edge pieces, which can be folded over and then sewn to the lining. The folded edge of this is going to be turned into a boning channel instead of actually sewing a new boning channel on there. And then I am gonna be sewing a new one onto this seam right here. And then in between the two channels is where the eyelets are going to go. And then the other edge is where I'm going to be putting the busk. So as with the other side, I'll fold this over and stitch the edge to the lining. And then I'll be able to stick the busk in. So let's start with folding these edges in and pinning them into place. I have a bit of a sewing catastrophe. And I kind of know what happened, but also I'm a little bit confused, so let me explain. I have created the same half of the corset twice. These are supposed to be mirror images of each other, and they are exactly the same. Somehow I didn't notice this until now, but it was a very small mistake that caused this. Basically, I just put the lining on the wrong side of the blue fabric before I started sewing them together. And I am still a little confused about this, and let me tell you why. When I was cutting the pattern pieces out, I traced the pattern onto my lining fabric, and then I flipped the pattern piece over, and then traced it again, so that I would have a mirror image of both of my pattern pieces. And so then I figured, when I sew them together, if I have the traced pen marks on the outside of the fabric, then I will be sewing them together correctly. And the pen marks, are visible on the lining on both of these, so I don't understand. And I actually specifically recall, I had them lined up the opposite way. I did. And then I was like, hmm, that can't be right, because the pen marks are not visible on this one, so I must have them lined up wrong. And then I, and then I, and then I ruined it. So all of this sewing needs to be undone. 
on one half. One of the halves is fine, but basically on the other one, I need to completely tear out all of my stitching, all of it, and then put the lining on the other side of the blue fabric and do this all over again. I hope that this is okay because I trimmed the seam allowance. So I need to sew very close to the edge and I hope that that ends up working out fine. And I really wanted to tell you this because I don't want you to feel bad when you do something really weird sewing because it happens to the best of us. It is absolutely inevitable. We all do really strange things. And I'm still not 100% sure how this happened because I can see the pen marks on the lining on both of these and that doesn't make sense. But um, yeah, weird stuff is going to happen. You need to be ready for it and it is going to suck. This is very annoying. I don't wanna have to re-sew this entire half again, but it is what it is. And I am going to be very proud of this corset when it's done. I sure hope so. So don't be ashamed of your weird mistakes. And with that, let's cut out all of my stitching. All right, it's been a few seconds for you, but I've just spent a lot of time completely re-sewing this half of the corset and I am finally caught up. The next thing I'm gonna do is put in the busk. For this sort of hook part of the busk, I'm gonna line it up with the fabric and mark where each of these little claspy pieces are. Then I'll cut little slits where I put the marks right in the fold of the fabric and finish them like buttonholes so that these pieces can go on the inside and then sort of like poke out through the holes. I hope that makes sense. For the other side of the busk, we just have these sort of little knobs that these clasps hook over. So for that side, I'm not gonna need to do any sort of buttonhole style finishing. I'm just gonna use an awl to poke holes where those are going to stick through. These are small enough that I don't think I'll actually need to cut any of the fibers of the fabric, just sort of sticking them through the weave should work well enough, and that way the fabric won't be fraying. Once I have the busk pieces actually put into the corset, I'm gonna sort of sew a little seam right up against where it is to make a really secure channel to hold it in place. So let's finally put the busk in. got each side of the busk in the corset. And now I believe I did mention this, I'm gonna sew right around where the busk is so that it doesn't shift around. And when I'm doing that, I'm also gonna be sewing a line really close towards the edge of the other opening so that I can make another little channel for a piece of boning to go into. And then also, also, I'm going to sew a line right next to this seam to make another channel right here. At the lace-up opening, you wanna have two pieces of boning that the eyelets can go in between. If you don't, when you go to lace it up, it's all gonna kind of like scrunch up and get weird and wrinkly and it just won't behave properly. And I think I'm just gonna use a really fine running stitch to do these lines. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I have actually stuck the boning into our other channels already. So this has got a little bit of firmness to it now, which is nice. So anywho, let's make these last few boning channels and stick that boning in and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do next. I've sewn those final boning channels and I inserted the boning. I also sewed up the ends of the channels so that the boning doesn't come out. Something I thought was really cool is when I clip the corset together and then twist it, look at the structure. 
like it makes a beautiful helical shape. You can see that it's not just like all floppy anymore, man. The power of boning, I tell ya. But it's still so incredibly flexible. Anyways, what I'm going to do next is I have this edge binding. I was thinking that I was probably going to have to make my edge binding because I was out, but then I just happened to find this at the thrift store for 50 cents. There's plenty of it and it happens to be light blue. And I do believe that it's 100% cotton as well. So I'm just gonna sort of go along the edges of the corset to trim these little fraying bits and any uneven spots on the fabric, and then we can start sewing this on. If you've never used edge binding before, I'll show you how it works. It looks like this really thin strip, but you can actually unfold it. And then you can unfold it even farther. One of these edges you're gonna put right up against the nice side of your corset, lay it flat and sew along this top edge right there, right where you see the fold. Then after that, you should be able to fold it over to the other side and use a whip stitch to sew it to the back. So you're basically trapping the fraying edge of this fabric into the tape. This step might take a while. I wanna do it really carefully to be sure I get a really good clean edge, but the finish line is in sight. It took me a while, but I did all of the binding on the top and bottom edges of the corset. The next thing I'm gonna do is some flossing. This is the embroidery that I mentioned earlier that's decorative, but also helps to keep the boning in place. I'm gonna do a little flower motif, so that'll just be like a little V shape that's sort of the leaves, and then a stem coming up with a little flower on top. I'll probably do the lazy daisy stitch for that. So that's the design I'm gonna do at the bottom of each boning channel, but I also wanna do a little something closer to the top. I'll probably just do an upside down V. So hopefully the flossing doesn't take me long, and and then we can add the grommets. I actually found these at the thrift store and they're exactly what I was looking for. They're little golden colored eyelets, probably made of brass. And they even have this little like stampy tool thingy to apply them. And I'll just use my awl to poke the holes first. Okay, so it turns out I actually can't use those eyelets because the tool that you use to put them in is broken. So I've ordered some more on Amazon last night and they should be here in a few days. So I will put them in then. Hello, excuse my wet hair, I have just had a shower, but the eyelets are now in the corset. So I was actually able to try it on, and it is kind of asymmetrical. It's in pretty superficial ways, like these tabs at the bottom that the garters will come off of. They are pretty uneven, but like not height-wise, they're just kind of like set a little weirdly. Then the eyelets at the back, they are parallel and they're matching up well, but the actual like fabric part is a little bit uneven. One side is longer than the other just a tad. And then when I put the corset on, the lacing is just a tiny bit wonky and I think I know why these things are happening. This is the first corset I've ever made, so there were bound to be some problems. Problem number one, I used linen. And it's not that there aren't linen corsets in existence, but just this fabric is a little bit more malleable than ideal for a corset. I believe the ideal fabric for a corset is silk coutille. I could be wrong, but it's a very not stretchy fabric. In any direction, it is very, very solid. It's almost paper-like. But this fabric being more malleable meant that when I was cutting the pieces out, they were bound to be a little bit different on each side. So that probably caused some of the unevenness. And then the other problem is the fact that I had to re-sew one of the halves, which meant that I lost a little bit of my seam allowance. So one of the sides, just has a little bit less fabric than the other, which is very unfortunate. However, despite all of these things, when I put this corset on, it does give me the desired silhouette, and the silhouette itself is symmetrical. So it's most definitely not perfect, but I think I'm still gonna go with this corset, and I'll probably make another one in the future, knowing what I know now. But not only has this taken me a whole lot of time so far, it's the first one I've ever made, and I kinda wanna use it. So what do we need to do next to this corset? I need to add the garters. That'll be one on each of these tabs in the front and then also some on the back. I'll sew those really solidly to the inner side of the corset and then we'll whip stitch some lace onto the top edge and then we'll be done. 
I actually just made these little loops with the edge binding that the garters can hook into. And that is the finished result of the corset for Alice of Wonderland as an Edwardian lady. I am overall quite happy with this corset, and it's not perfect, but that's kind of what I was expecting. I honestly kind of thought it was going to go a little worse. The most important thing is that it gives me the silhouette that I'm looking for. It's also quite comfortable and feels pretty sturdy, I don't feel like it's going to totally fall apart. The Alice inspiration for this garment specifically is pretty basic, it's pretty much just the stereotypical color palette for Disney's Alice. I hope you learned a little something from this project, I know I did. And that concludes part two of this series. I hope you enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I hope you learned something from this project. Why can't I talk? I actually, I, this happens every time I try and film an outro. I, I don't know why I can't talk right now. I actually am just screwing everything up. <laughs>